Today, we have the Midas archetype, Midas touch archetype, I'm going to call it. Okay, and this comes off the back of last time's hero episode. You'll see how this connects. Because last time, I think I said, I talked about Ruchaki Yog. Don't worry, I'll explain what Ruchaki Yog is in a minute. And I talked about Valentino Rossi and I said, I wonder where he's going to be. And then a few hours later, I got the guidance. Ah, he's got the Midas touch. Okay, so let me back up to the beginning. What is the Midas touch? Now, firstly, where did I come across this uh, phrase anyway? Well, you all know the Caroline Mace archetype stack, and I've been pulling out an archetype every episode. And the one that I'm going to pull out today is the Midas Miser archetype. Okay, now I don't know what the rule is for the miser. That may come later. I'm not sure. Uh, I, I can't just, you know, yeah, not just yet. All these things will come. I don't know. We'll find out. But Midas touch, absolutely. So it has here light attributes, entrepreneurial or creative ability to turn anything to gold. Now we know that in our culture today, we use this phrase, wow, look at that person. They've got the Midas touch. Whatever they touch turns to gold. Where does this story come from? Now, this story is actually a Greek story. And it's amazing. Anytime I read a Greek myth or another culture's mythology, I always end up thinking, hey, we've got something like that in the Vedic tradition. You know, with, with this, I couldn't quite think off the top of my head what is similar. So if you know in the comments below, let me know, because I know a lot of you guys, you know all your Vedic myths really, really well. You probably know them all better than I do. So let me know in the comments below what is similar. But in the Greek legend, we have King Midas. And yes, ancient King Midas. Now, he had a wish. He had a wish that was granted to him. And it was that he wanted that whatever he touches turns to actual physical gold. That's what he wanted, and it was granted. So he has this amazing time. Midas rejoiced in his new power, which he hastened to put to the test. I'm quoting from Wikipedia. He touched an oak twig and a stone. Both turned to gold. Overjoyed, as soon as he got home, he touched every rose in the rose garden, and all became gold. He ordered the servants to set the feast on the table and he was hungry. So he touches the food and it turns to gold. And he starts to get really depressed actually because what happens is he, he's starving. He can't eat anything. And then he touches his daughter and she turns into a gold statue. And he becomes really depressed and he curses this great gift that he's been given. Uh, it says here, however, according to Aristotle, legend held that Midas eventually died of starvation as a result of his vain prayer for the gold touch, the curse never being lifted. So there is quite a big story behind uh, this Midas touch. But how we use the phrase in culture today, we're not bringing up the whole Greek myth and that, oh, you, and anything you touch turns to gold, but later you'll be depressed. No, we just stop it. Everything you touch turns to gold. And that's how we use it today. That, wow, that person's got the golden touch. It's a really positive thing to say about someone. Okay. So what is the astrological rule for this? Now, this is where I believe Ruchak Yog. Now, what is Ruchak Yog? Okay. Let's go back to this. Ruchaki Yoga is, it's a yoga here in Vedic astrology where if Mars is exalted in Kendra position, it is considered Ruchaki Yoga. And last time when I was talking about the hero archetype, I was talking about who qualifies as a hero. Now, if you read the classics, you might think, well, surely Ruchaki Yoga people, they are heroic and that's why this episode should hopefully be a good contrast to last time's hero episode and the people that I picked uh, because you'll see some differences I, I still think that Rahu in the 8th or Rahu in Scorpio is more heroic 
than a Ruchak Yog person. I think Ruchak Yog is, um, so now I'll, I'll read the definition as per Light on Life by Hart Defoe and Robert Svoboda. Okay, this is the book that I recommend to absolutely everyone because everyone always asks me, how did you learn astrology? Tell me which books to read. Well, this is the book to read. All right, so he says here, the person born in Ruchaki Yog will have a long face, will acquire wealth by doing many daring deeds. Yes, that's true. They are daring. Uh, we've, we've got a very good example of that coming up. Will be brave, will overcome his enemies, will be powerful and arrogant. He will be the leader of an army. And this I see in classic texts time and time again. Will be the leader of an army. That is interesting because I've written here commander-in-chief because I do want to do an episode that is a commander-in-chief episode as well so we, we've got so many to explore here guys uh, but it says he will be a leader of an army and will emerge victorious in all his attempts now this i totally have seen in practice will emerge victorious in all his attempts that's another way of saying the midas touch you've got the midas touch you put that person on that project it will succeed you give that person the thing to do and they'll do it really really well you put them in a competition they're going to win okay so i see ruchak yog which is exalted mars in kendra position as having the midas touch that's how i see it uh, i also see what else do i see so the astrological rule for midas touch ruchak yog exalted mars anywhere just an exalted mars Okay, so you're an exalted Mars, you've got the Midas touch. And you could also have um, even just Mars in the 10th in any sign is good enough. So shall we take a look at some example charts? So who have I got this time? I'll try and go through these really quickly because last time I took way too long. I know, I indulged a lot. I think I indulged a lot talking about I, Charlie Teo ate up a lot of time there, but that's because I found that card and it was very exciting. Okay, let's go quickly through these. So the first one and look okay so look at these people and I'll, I'll try and draw this out as I bring each one of them up they're not particularly going to be leading an army okay so I, we do need to do a, an archetype of commander-in-chief or something like that we will do that at some point I don't know when <laughs> these they're just being guided to me I have no idea so let's take a look at the first one all right Clive James we've seen him on this channel before he's one of the masters of starlight and he's got Ruchaka Yog in the 10th house. Now just look at him. Is he leading an army? I don't think so. <laughs> I mean, he was a funny guy. He was a comedian. He was, you know, doing a terrific job on the BBC with that postcard series. And maybe you could say he was the leader of an army of writerly types, editors, film production people. I bet he was quite a bit of a, you know, when, when he was in the editing room, he would be telling people, all right, put the music like this and edit that bit out and do this and do that. I, I'm sure he, you know, of course, there was a great leadership quality in here, but I wouldn't say that he is, if, if in a reading I say you're going to run an army, that's totally wrong because his whole life he was really a writer and, a you know, a great presenter uh, on, on TV. He was a creative type. But he had the Midas touch. Whatever he touched turned to gold. So he found Margarita Prakatan. Now, apparently she was just on some tiny little US TV, cable TV show or something like that. But he kind of picks her up out of America, brings her to London. And all of a sudden she she's benefiting from his Midas touch. She's got this incredible international career and she's got CD and she's got all this fame. You know, whatever he touched really did turn to gold. The next example I have is Sasha Baron Cohen. Okay, now his time, I don't particularly have his time, but the way it says 10 a.m., so that could be his time. But the way it is in the chart system, you'll see when I bring up his chart, it looks like he's got a Ruchaki Yog in the fourth house. So was he commanding an army? No, he wasn't. Although you could say he was commanding an army of hairstylists and makeup people and uh, TV people, again, sort of similar to Clive James. 
he was totally fearless though and he did as it says in this book here you know these people they put themselves in very dangerous situations Sash Baron Cohen did do that I mean the stuff he did was insane yeah doing many daring deeds I mean what Sasha Baron Cohen did in his various TV shows I mean some of that was just wild you know yeah I I could explain but you guys know you've seen him on TV or films or whatever you know uh all right so but he has the Midas touch okay whatever crazy project whatever crazy thing he thought to do and he put himself in very compromising and difficult situations where he's totally disguised and you know especially when he was um Borat the very original days of Borat when he would go to like an etiquette uh school in London undercover and things like that you know he he put himself in yeah very uh interesting situations but was fearless and courageous and yeah but had the Midas touch all the crazy kooky ideas he came up with they all worked he made them all work and they were mad crazy wild ideas uh Zoe Sugg she's the next person we're going to take a look at Zoe Sugg why do I have her here she's got exalted Mars in the 11th house in Capricorn that's a really strong Mars and whatever she touches turns to gold so whatever video she puts up right she puts up a video and it will get within hours tens of thousands of views really quickly she's got this incredible Mars happening in an air house in the 11th house <clears throat> so when she does a Primark haul okay Primark is uh, a shop here in the United Kingdom that sells really cheap stuff she'll go there buy a great big bag full of clothes and then review it on the internet that video can over time it may have 10 million views kind of thing I mean it's the numbers she gets is amazing lots of other young women are trying to create similar channels they don't have the Midas touch they don't have that she could review anything so as I say Primark she could do like a stationery haul from Sainsbury's you know Sainsbury's is just a big supermarket you know so she's not choosing big glitzy brands or any of that she's just choosing the simplest of stuff sometimes she just has her camera on and it's um filming her cleaning her house and that's the video you know and it gets such big views it's amazing and other people try to create content like hers and it doesn't go anywhere she has got the Midas touch uh so I mentioned last time Valentino Rossi here he is all right he's the motorcyclist who keeps winning race after race after race after race and in the photo that I've got on the screen what I'm going to show you is he's got this incredible helmet where he's got a picture of his own face kind of screaming so when he's on the motorbike he looks down and you can see his face I think it's just so clever but he's got the Midas touch now where is his uh, exalted Mars it's in the sixth house of course of competition it's phenomenal and how I know about him is because a long time ago I used to write for Shell Petrol and I think back then I don't know it was called a Scuderia Ferrari I used to write ads and things for all these sort of things that I have zero interest in but because of the work I was doing that's how I know about this guy um, advertising is a cool profession in that it gets you it got me to learn about all these areas of life that I would otherwise have no clue about and I remembered watching a documentary about him Valentino Rossi and it featured like the top athletes of our time it had um gosh what's that tennis player's name I forgot his name but he's very famous Roger Federer it had Roger Federer it had like David Beckham it had I mean fill in the blank think of whatever famous sports star you've ever known they were all on this documentary about Valentino Rossi and they were all singing his praises saying what an incredible man he is and how they look up to him and admire him and they're inspired by him and you know and why are they so inspired by him it's just because he keeps winning he keeps winning race after race after race after race I could imagine that fans of motorcycling might have been a bit bored with the races because he just kept winning them all the time you know so 
just I think he's probably got one of the most impressive track records of all time. We're going to see why in a moment. Next person we have got is Dynamo. Dynamo is a magician here in England and he's got the Midas touch. He's not only got the Midas touch, but he's got a sort of magic touch. He, yeah, he, he does use his hands. Oh, I really want to look at his chart now because I'm talking about his hands. I wonder if we've got Gemini there. Oh, I'm going to bring it up. Let, let me have a look. Yeah, we do indeed. Rahu and Gemini, I knew we did. Oh, an exalted, yes, of course, Saturn in the third. Yeah, he's a, he's a magician. He uses his hands, sleight of hand, magic, Midas touch though. It's, it's like, you know, and I could imagine that he would have had to practice a lot, but he would get things to the place where he's got that magic touch. It's foolproof and it works time and time and time again. And the last person I've got here is Gail Kelly. Now, she, I think, of all of these people, is the most kind of commander-in-chief, like, or running an army. Uh, and, and we're going to take a look and we're going to see how she is. And I think we don't have her time. I'm pretty confident she has Ruchak Yog. She definitely has Ruchak Yog from her moon. And you'll see that she was running basically an army of bankers very successfully. So let me share the screen now with you with the chart software. And there we go. Hopefully that looks okay on the screen. I never know how to size it. But who's the first one that I talked about? All right, it was Clive James. You know, the, the writer, okay, the writer, the creative guy. That He's got the real deal, Ruchak Yog, in the 10th as well. I mean, gosh. And I suppose some of his ideas were, they were a bit wild and a bit crazy, maybe a bit like sort of Sasha Baron Cohen. I mean, Sasha Baron Cohen, we're going to see his Richard Yog in a moment. And you'll see why his is particularly over the top. But Clive James, yeah, some of the ideas he had and some of the things he did, like, yeah, they would have needed a bit of magic to work or to fly. Um but he's definitely not a commander in an army. Though internally he might have felt like he was. Look at that. Wow, we've got it again here in the 10 in the first house. And we've got this Mars in Aries here in the 5th in D9. Yeah, he was enormously creative. Uh, but that is, you see, what I'm after here with the Archetype series is in a reading, what can I definitely say? And be accurate. <laughs> okay, this is the main thing. I need to say something about this placement. I've got to be accurate. So if I say to him, you're a commander of an army or something, well, professionally he might not be. Okay, so he's got the writer archetype here, Moon, Mercury and Kendra position. So he's got a writing gift. Let's say I didn't know anything about him at all. I can say he's got a gift for writing and be correct about it. He, he, professionally, that's what he did for a living. But I, if I say you've got the Midas touch, that's accurate. You see, so this is, this is also part of this archetypes exercise. I'm also wanting to be very precise in what I say. So, and, you know, and give myself these kind of rules and things. Um, so, and I'm not, I'm not saying that light on life is wrong. I'm not saying that what's written here is wrong. Okay, it's correct. It's absolutely correct. But the part that's the most correct is the end bit of that statement. Okay, the end bit of the statement will emerge victorious in all his attempts. And that can be summed up as the Midas touch. You've got the Midas touch, you've got the magic touch. I can 100% say that for sure, and I will be accurate. Right? So let's take a look at the next one, Sasha Baron Cohen. All right, now there, there's his Ruchak Yog. Now his is extreme. Okay, this has got Rahu here as well. So this is him being masked, him, I mean, putting himself in the most outrageous situations where, you know, people might want to physically but really hurt him. Uh, just, wow such courage 
but I wouldn't call him a hero. See, and that's why I'm making the distinction between a hero. You want to use the word hero for leader of an army. But yeah, I, I don't see any of these uh, people I've listed here as particularly being heroic. But I am seeing that so hero, Rahu in Scorpio is a better, better description for hero. Here, this is a good description for Midas touch. You will, whatever you put yourself, whatever game you put yourself in, you will win, you will emerge victorious, you will turn the project into gold. You'll do that. Sasha Baron Cohen. All right, let's take a look at Zoe Sag. She's doing a Primark haul. Look at that. She's winning. She's winning millions of views off the back of one Primark haul. You know what I mean? And that, that translates to money. That's great. So, yeah, I mean, look at that. Mars exalted here in the House of Gains. What's she gaining? She's gaining followers. She's gaining viewers. She's gaining money per view. She's gaining, 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 gaining. It's Earth as well. The material uh, thing that's going on here is, is just so incredible. It's so wonderful. Really, really great chart. So that's Zoe Sug. Let's take a look at Valentino Rossi. Here he is, as promised. Valentino exalted Mars in the sixth house. And opposite that is an exalted Jupiter in the twelfth. This entire line, now often on the channel I've said read the line, read the whole line. You look at that, the whole line is exalted. It's lit and it's exalted. So I mean, whatever competition, you can you can for sure say whatever competition this person goes into, they are going to win. They have to win. And he did. He, won he kept winning all the time. So that's Valentino Rossi. Let's take a look at Dynamo. Dynamo's got his in the same place. Uh, this exalted Mars in the sixth house here. I think we do have his time. I think we're correct there, yeah. So we can read this as is. Yeah, he's he's got a terrific um wow, and his is interesting in Shravana. So this one he's got in Danishta here. This is Shravana Nakshatra. Interesting. Very magician, yeah. Yep, I can, interesting. Okay, so that's, well, anyway, we've got the Midas touch, the magic touch right here. Kind of want to move along. I don't want today's episode to be as long as the last one was. Uh, and let's have a look quickly at Gail Kelly, if I can find her. Right, there we go. Gail Kelly, now I'll show you a little magic trick right here. <laughs> when uh, We've got a time just at, at 12, because I don't know, we don't have an exact time for her. Comes up as a Gemini ascendant, but if we look at her from the moon, Hey, presto, look at that. We've got some magic right here. I mean, that's a banker if ever there was. I mean, that's a really brilliant one. Some, someone who's, you know, I mean, this is just stunning uh, for, for the chart of a banker. We've got this line, really well lit. Rahu's here in uh, the second house. And it's interesting, I did say that none of these I would particularly call a hero. But I'm looking at Gail Kelly. She does have Rahu in Scorpio. So there, there will be something in her life that has been heroic that she has done. Uh, and it, it could be hidden from public view. So, yeah, and she's got some challenge here in, in Scorpio as well. So hero archetype, we can definitely say for her. Um, and in terms of running an army you know I think we she's of all the people here she's the one person who's kind of the most commander-in-chief type but that's also because of this um exalted sun here we've also got exalted Jupiter I mean it's just incredible and a guard case for yoga I mean we could just keep going we could talk about a chart on and on it's really really something incredible but yeah what what we can say for sure is that she's got the Midas touch. She's got the magic touch. As a bonus chart, why don't we take a little look at uh, Christian Dior here. This is really interesting, but um, I can't remember. I think it was Pierre Cardin, but it was somebody who, when talking about Christian Dior, they were saying that 
you know, he's long gone. The man is not, you know, he's 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 been gone for a long time. He, he I think he died at a, at a young age, uh, and he's been gone for a really long time. And yet, uh, this person had said his name remains the magic name to this day. And we've got that here, exalted um, Mars. In D10 and in D9 as well, look at that, which I tend to read as a future self, you know. Um, and we've got, yeah, twice here. It's it's quite powerful. So Christian Dior definitely had that magic touch as well. His name has a magic touch, you know, just print his name on something and kind of like Zoe Selgitz. It becomes famous and brings in money and all that amazing stuff. So I do hope this has been a good episode for you. Let me know in the comments below uh, your thoughts on this episode. If you have the magic touch, gosh, we would love to hear from you. Or if you know someone who does, then let me know in the comments below. And I don't know what's going to be the next archetype. That's how the, this thing is evolving and it's growing. So I'm just being led and guided and I'm sharing as I go along. So I don't know what's coming next, but it'll be something. <laughs> so um, let me know how you get on in the comments below. And I look forward to seeing you next time.